while ago. I mean, not just the other days. I think we turned our back for a few seconds. Turned back and bag of hot dogs. Back then, all we did Look, look around, look around. Yeah, they might give you a couple there it is, up in the tree in the mouth of a raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's they, uh, it didn't waste any time. Behind her back, she got it. I actually have that list for you so she knows. Because mm -hmm. I know there was uh, mm -hmm. there was uh, there's a game uh, last year. It's on my list. I ran out of the day. Oh, maybe he mm -hmm. has a change up and a curve and then something else that was three and it's the kind of neighbor yeah she ended up walking and like, ah, yeah. no, 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 I mean, it's like some of it's almost two and a half, three foot tall now. Really good. Yeah. Oh, there's that. It's a whole thing. No, no, no. I didn't know. Keep rolling. behind the bed. Yeah. That was just. Like. Holland, Michigan, or old yeah. Holland? No, like yeah. in Michigan. That's really nice. I beat Steve, so I'm not late, right? Is he, is he coming? Uh, I think I saw him parking lot, yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Gavel, Yeah. Oh, you're right. Right. Oh, about that kind of That is weird. It's kind of like, uh, don't get privacy. Oh, there's my watch. The elders day in the original store even on the I guess the purchase screen and stuff like that. I've got those for every one of those I think you know about those by you or yeah. I'll get you those I've got that for the wall. Okay, sure, cool. Yeah, that way we can uh I I guess I can send you to the buyers. Yeah, they were. Yeah, I'll shoot you those tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's fine. Because we were looking to that guy where he touched my guy in the obsession too. Yeah, part of it's in the township. So, we're just going to have to take it off. 502, I call this work session to order. First up is Art Wall. Don't see our. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I <laughs> snuck in on you. You are up. All right. Uh, I have some papers to pass out to anybody who would want one. <clears throat> Just get me in here. Um, this is a pamphlet that my website designer made regarding the creation of uh, the Artwell website that I plan to create. Thank you. Does anybody else want one? And then one more thing. Yep. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'll get going here. So, um, good evening. <laughs> nice to see you guys again. Uh, it's been a minute, but I've been working on this for a while now. I've only gotten more excited, so I hope you guys are excited too. Um, so just kind of as a recap, uh, my name is Avery Jura. Um, I was here a while ago and I wrote, well, I'm proposing the idea of an art wall in downtown Whitehall for free expression of art, basically. And so I've basically narrowed down my proposal into a list of actions that I'm going to do, um, assuming that it's approved, so that it's pretty straightforward what would be happening if this is approved. So I just kind of want to walk you down to the, the second paper that I gave out. Um, you'll notice on the back of the paper is uh, just kind of a collage that I created of uh, some art examples that was requested at the last meeting. This is just a bunch of my own works that I put together. So that's just kind of some of the stuff that I've made. Um, but obviously there'd be a lot of diverse different styles going up on the wall. That's just some of my stuff. So um, the first thing that would be attached to this art wall that I would do is I would like to obviously clean up the area because the tunnel, I mean, it's nice, but it needs some improvement. So uh, I've got a couple of bullets here. Removing waste, weeds, leaves, and vegetation. There's a lot of like just dirt on the walls and stuff. Um, and I'd like to create and maintain signs. Uh, I talk about one specific, like a rule sign later down, but just like nice signs that Basically, I'm going to put like a trash can out and like things that say to, you know, keep your, keep the space clean. Um, and then making like general improvements to the area. And I obviously will be painting on the wall <laughs> if it's approved because I'm big into that. Uh, the next thing uh, that I would like to do is actually I've already done. So I've actually added two more people to my crew. So a website designer, her name, her name is Amelia Chen. She'll be a senior next year at Whitehall. Um, and she has experience creating websites for NHD, and she has created this pamphlet, which has a bunch of information about the website that I'd like to make. Uh, and then also, Brady Tate is going to be a junior next year at Whitehall, and he's going to be a new member of NHS. And I've appointed him to be uh, the caretaker, um, and the, the jobs of the caretaker would be, so regularly, minimum monthly, um, check up. Uh, the wall, make sure there's nothing, you know, really inappropriate or, you know, not kind of offensive. Uh, plan the annual cleaning because I'd like to get that done every year. Um, I'll keep the website and social media, although media, Amelia would be helping with that because she's the website designer. Um, planning events, outreach, um, if there's a social media account, uh, upkeeping that. And then also maintaining a relationship with you guys, you know, keeping you guys in the loop about everything that's going on. Um, the next thing would be the website. So I, I've given the pamphlet because honestly, I don't know very much about website design, which is why I had Amelia join me. So she created this pamphlet so you guys can see like what would be included in that. And there's going to be a, a price attached yearly. So I'm hoping that we could do like a fundraiser or something just with our NHS. It'd probably be like between 50 to 100 dollars a year for the domain um but that's like light work i mean we could just sell some paint for one day a year and call it a painting day and make quite a bit of money for the wall so um obviously nonprofit. and then uh so then the the more jobs uh no wait sorry so then uh here's here's just some bullets about the website and like the purposes um contact information of whoever's a caretaker at the time so right now it'll be Brady Tate. However, I'm he's going to graduate in a few years, so I'd like to keep that going for you know quite a while, um, so that we can make sure that this wall is being uh, like kept up to date. Um, I would like to create like a portal for like a like a a public report, so that public can report like misconduct or inappropriate stuff on the wall. So basically, if if you see something, then you can go to the website, which there'll be a barcode like at the wall so that you can like easily do that. Um, 
And then also like a place where the artists can send pictures because a lot of these art walls, um, they, they get covered up frequently because they're being frequently used. And it's kind of, a, I, think, I feel like if the website is, a, is kind of a place where we can share the artwork and then we can kind of immortalize it because if it's, if it's constantly getting covered up, then not everyone can enjoy it. And then also, uh, I'd like to create a social media. So just something to spread events, uh, updates, artist profiles, potentially p pictures, like I said, to immortalize the art and updates, such and such. Um, add to legalwalls.net. So this is just a website that I've used in the past as a street artist. It's literally just a nonprofit organization where you can go on and say that this wall is a safe place to paint and it would be very, it, it's like three steps for me to just add this wall. So that would be something that I would do. Um, I create a rule sign. So what I'm thinking is just like a wooden box, probably like two foot by two foot by like six inches and then with a glass plate over the top. And then inside would just be like a bulletin board with like the general rules. Here's the rules that I've kind of decided on with my team. No hate speech or inappropriate language slash content. Be considerate of other artists' works and keep the area clean. Um, and the wood blocks, the wood box would be locked with a removable glass panel so that no one can like paint over it, obviously, because that would be bad. So people couldn't see the rules. But yeah, that's that's all I've got right now. So any questions or comments at this at this time? I have one question right off the top of my head. Are we looking at the entire tunnel and the wall after it, or are we just looking at the wall outside? Well, I, I, I'm not positive what all okay. we're looking at to include it. Yeah, so I get what you're saying. So for those of you who are not familiar with the area, the, the tunnel is alongside the bike trail, and then it also kind of like goes off to the side toward Goodrich. Um, right now, that that kind of part that goes off to the side, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. I'm talking about the wall going, going uh, along the, the trail. Way too. Yeah, I. No, so I, mean, I know that part of the wall is included in it. I wasn't sure if the tunnel was included in it. Yes. Also. Yes. I'm just assuming that basically all of the cement surfaces in that area would be eventually. I'm not sure how much that one wall is going to be there and how much longer it's going to be there. Well, no, you're, you're, talking about, you're talking about the wall where. Oh, yeah. Not not on West Colby. Not, not on West Colby, that property. <coughs> oh. So essentially, it would be, I'm thinking, it would be from the tunnel to Tom, or not Thompson. Uh, Hanson. Hanson. Street. Like, uh, Hanson. 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 Yeah. yeah. So we're over yeah. the hills. Yeah. yeah. So it would be from the tunnel on this side to Hanson. Yeah. Because the other part of That's it gone. Is, yeah. It's, I mean, it would be. With, with whatever work we're going to be doing yeah. there, I don't yeah. know yeah. what kind of wall there's even going to be there. Yep. Um, probably not, be not, quite a bit of wall, but the... I'm not, so, not so sure that the person spending their money building a building would want artwork facing their windows. So I think yeah. we might have to leave that part of it out of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anything that's not public... I'll include signs around the area to make sure that people aren't painting on anything that's obviously not not part of the wall. So I'll make boundaries and make sure that people, it's very clear what is okay to be painted on and what is not. The only other thing I have that it's more of a, probably a personal comment or personal feeling or whatever, is you've talked before about, uh, you know, people painting over other people's stuff. And my first thought would be if there's space to still open space to paint, nobody paints over anybody else's yeah, stuff. I would 100% agree with you. And that's why in the rules list, I've just included be considerate of other artists' works. So, I mean, I guess what that would mean to me, I mean, that could be taken different ways, but I guess the, the most basic way that I see that is just if there's an open spot in the wall, then paint there. Don't paint over top of somebody else. So have you seen anybody in your travels where they have taken from yours and added to it? I actually have, yeah. So I did a piece in uh, I did a piece in Ann Arbor a, a while back, and somebody went and created like a background to it, and it was kind of cool, like a like a landscape. It was pretty sure sweet. Okay, cool. Almost like a puzzle. And I would I could totally see something like that happening in the future too. Like there's a spot in uh, Grand Rapids um, near a climbing gym that I go to actually, and. Uh, Every time I go, there's just something different, and it's just kind of like weird geometric shapes, and it's pretty cool. 
Any other questions? Well, from my perspective, looking at this, I think you've done a, a bang up job as far as going through and putting together the process and the, the stuff to give it to us. Um, I, you, you don't have a website yet, do you? No. So I just want to get it like approved, make sure you guys know, like are okay with the idea, and then I would go and build the stuff that is required. So yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys are good with the idea first. You put a put a lot of thought into the, the caretaking of this. Yeah. This project and lots of troubleshooting. What yeah, what I'm wondering about is you know, in the the long term going forward, is you know, people they, they graduate and then they move away, whether it's through NHS or or somewhere else. Is is there any sort of um, like adult um, oversight or chaperone type role that would that would be Continuous year yeah. after year after year. Um, yeah, so be the ultimate point of responsibility. Yeah, so two things to add to that. First of all, um, my name will always be on the website, and I'll be because like Whitehall will always be my home, and I'll be a resource as as long as this as long as I'm alive for this wall, and I'd like to be on that website for forever. Um, first thing, and second thing, um, this is now a uh, WHS legacy pro NHS legacy project which means that it gets passed down every year. Um, and so uh, our, our NHS advisors, uh, right now Mr. Thompson and Mr. Kogel, um, are there and I've talked to them extensively about this project and they're there to help make sure that this um, continues to be maintained over the years. And also the people that I appoint will make sure that they have a successor when they graduate and leave. Will the standards change from one from one uh, person to the next? Um, well, uh, under my oversight, definitely not. But um, if anyone had any changes in policy that they wish to have, I'm guessing that the person that they would contact would be you guys, so. So when, when are you gonna have a list of the policies? This is right here. Right here. Yeah. The, the rules this is what I got. This is really the list. The last few bullets. The other side of that. So what, uh, what is uh, inappropriate as far as you're concerned? I mean, inappropriate yeah, language, the stuff that we... Might not think that that was inappropriate, and maybe... Um, no, I, would, I wouldn't accept political statements, things that were um, used inappropriate uh, language, like swear words, things that aren't like school appropriate, like children appropriate, anything like that, um, like no nudity or sex sexual content. Things like that would be painted over. What about religious type content? Um, I think that things could be said for either side of that. I wouldn't paint over something as long as it wasn't offending a specific group. So, I mean, if somebody made like a, a giant cross that was like beautiful and intricate, I wouldn't paint over it because it's not offensive to anybody. Or at least, I mean, outside of group sources. And then look, Steve, from on what I've seen on here is you can have a reportable. Yeah, um, that's another thing. So those, what do they call those little black dotted things? It's a QR. QR. Yeah. yeah. So on the website, so you, can scan, you can scan your QR code and say, "Hey, this isn't. I don't want yeah. this," and it can come back. It'll be a direct money. thing on the in in the rules uh, in the rule sign. There'll be a QR code, and I'll have it very clearly so that someone can um, report any misconduct or inappropriate content. So if someone disagrees with something, then we'll paint it over regardless of what it is. I don't know if I like the idea of somebody just going there and painting whatever they think is wonderful. I think that the uh, design ought to be approved before they do it. So now I don't know if that limits. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I. Or what, but I, I don't, because between the time of it going up and it offending a bunch of people and it actually being something being done about it, then that might be quite a while. I don't know, might be a month, might be three months, I don't know. Well, Steve, it, it, this is going to be public space, which says if you paint something tomorrow, and you go down there tomorrow and you find it offensive, you can paint over it. Anyone can put what they want there. When we open this up to public, we're saying the public can do this, not just Avery that's going to do it, it's... We're saying any, anybody that feels artistic 
desire to put something up there can do it. And anyone that finds anything offensive, can you can go down there with your can of spray paint and cover it up. Right over the top. Right over the top of it. Right top of it. Art is subjective. I mean, yes, it is. That <clears throat> art is, is completely different than what I might think art is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some yeah. people think that uh, taking a can, can of paint and throwing it on a wall or a different color here or another color here, that's art. <laughs> Well, not just art, but I think the words appropriate and offensive are also inherently subjective. And, and due to the nature exactly. of art, you, I think it's very likely you will get people want to test the boundaries. And, and it's possible in the future that that testing of boundaries results with discussions coming right back yeah. to this board. Um, that's we have the nature, I suppose. Yeah. And then if we don't like it. We do a test run, and we don't like it, it gets painted back over. I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world. Is it painted now? Huh? Is it painted now? Yes, the inside of the tunnel is painted now. It's painted gray. And what, the, gray? Yeah. The, out, gray. Uh, the outside piece to the north is not, but I was just down there the other day looking just because I knew this was coming up. But, yeah. It's all this beige. There is <laughs> some sort of <laughs> that was on there now yeah. that's been there for quite some time. Might I point out, it's not the most beautiful piece I've ever seen. <laughs> is, it, is it art or is it? It's just somebody painting? took a spray paint can and. Somebody's painting. Yeah. But we've, that's what I'm concerned about. I, I mean, that type of thing. what I've what I've experienced also. in my experience of art walls is that you'll get you'll get really big, interesting pieces, and then you'll get little things like that. But when you put it all together, it looks really good, regardless of how little talent the people who just spray their names is. The color and everything, it just kind of makes a culture and it looks cool. It's almost like a changing mural. Exactly. Yeah. I'm so. Personally, I, I'm excited to see what happens there. I'm, I think this is a wonderful thing. I, I, I share your apprehension to a point, Steve, that I certainly don't want anything inappropriate up there. And I'm, I'm gonna be watching it on a daily basis. For what you can you might be painted for. Might not be the same as what I consider. That's true. Yeah, so let's, let's let's you and I collaborate on that. You can start it. You, you, you're close <laughs> enough. You can check it every day as well. You can make a collaborative art piece yeah, expressing your feelings if you like. I mean, I've never seen a Picasso painting that I thought was art. So you know, <laughs> what they sell for. Yeah. And how many places and have, have you, like have you traveled? Me. Oh, gosh. Sounds like, sound like you do this. I've been to over. at least six or seven different art walls and i've seen so many different pieces all over internet through my travels and i'm, I'm just in love with street so art you've been to six to seven different locations yourself yeah this stuff up. yeah okay and, and in your experience how many offensive pieces have you seen that um, say offend you I haven't personally been offended. The worst thing that I've seen was just uh, during times of political tension, statements such as like help Ukraine, stuff like that. Um, that's the only things that I've seen that would, you know, make me hesitate at all just because it's overly political. But I haven't seen anything like overly offensive. What if somebody puts a rainbow flag up there and some people don't like that idea? Then we'll paint it over. If they report it, then we'll paint it over. It's a cool idea. Because as, as the police officers in this council chamber can attest, there has been tagging done around the city. And this gives them, again, just kind of like the skateboarders and everything else, it gives them a place to go. Hey, guess what? Instead of doing this over on KK's car wash over there, go down there. It gives them a place to put somebody. Hey, guys, we got a spot. Just go down there. That is a valuable point. And I actually, in my research paper that I did last time, um, I actually did research on uh, the Ann Arbor art wall. And I've noticed that the the crime, I literally looked at the crime mapping over time and like the the vandalism through like, like vandalism in general has gone down in other areas after the art wall was implemented. Gives the kids of that age with something to do. Make them get a job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would. I would certainly like you to, uh, think, you know, I think there's enough positivity, enough consensus here that I think 
I'm, I'm, I'm all for going forward with it. And when it comes right down to it, if, if it turns out in a year, two years, that hey, this isn't working out, how big of a deal is it to repay? I mean, we know, can stop it at any point. Stop it. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's any, but and any council meetings, we can yeah. say, okay, that's it, it's done. Yeah. But, but I don't know. I, I have seen it in other areas. Uh, some of the stuff that they've done in Muskegon over the the, the, the highway that they stuff. paid for, and I, paid yeah, a lot. Yeah, I realize, yeah, I realize <laughs> that's a little they bit paid a fortune. That they was, a, fortune that was that. a complete thing, you know, that right. was done. But but it's it's very attractive. I mean, I and it's a great location. Right. It's unique. Where else can these guys say, "Hey, we painted under a bridge tunnel"? I mean, or right. on that. Yeah. So, what's wrong? I'd like to see where it goes. <clears throat> just to add real quick, I'd just like to point out that I decided to name the wall Inspiration Art Wall just because I think that's a fitting title and I feel inspired to do art myself and I feel that other people can be inspired by this area to do it as well. I would certainly, so at this point, it would have to go to a, do we need to move it to a council meeting for an official vote? Yeah, Will and I were just talking about that. We probably do need to have some sort of formalization or formal approval. I think so. Looking at um, incorporating a lot of what uh, Avery has already put together with the obvious stipulation that at any time a majority council says we're done, then we're done. And the artist will just have to know that that's you know, the bottom line. I know the conversations uh, Council Member Sikinga have come up with the the art walk, with the sculptures that have been put around the White Lake community, you know, who's gonna approve? And at that point, I think the city council, I don't know if you were on it that time, Jeff and Steve, was yeah. should the city council be, be approving it? Same discussion. Four might like it, three might dislike it. We just kind of trusted the artist and the process not to have anything offensive. Now we might see more later. That's right. So uh, also I would, certainly suggest that uh, before you make any plans to do any signage or trash cans or whatever, you certainly connect with staff and DPW. I mean, it, it, oh, we're, we're fine with him cleaning as soon as he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking you mentioned a trash can. I mean, yeah. that, that, that gets a lot of bike traffic and foot traffic. And yeah. you certainly don't want a, a, someone crashing into a, a trash can or so. Uh, anything that well we'll try to adhere to all regulations yes so well, just, just, just so D, D, the dpw and staff knows what's going on up there going on there so yes. i i do have a question I, like i said i think this is an awesome idea i think it's going to run real well is can we help them out with the signage so it looks professional and um we can to a degree I, I don't know if we need anything as elaborate as a wooden as a locked wooden box i think something that's uh weather resistant um i'm just saying nothing a metal sign on each end like what we got at the sliding hill and everything yeah, else it just pretty much something we get yeah, from so Jordan boston calendar like, like yeah like uh at the at the uh splash, splash pad. pad here's yeah. your rules yeah it's easy enough to have them put a qr code in the corner for you and uh, we can probably that do way that. We cover that, and it's something you can you can pay for your web page, and we can. I would like to see if there's anything we can do to improve the lighting in there. It's not real good. Yeah, I would also like to do that in the future as well. Um, I don't know what that entails as far as is it a different type of walls or is that whatever? Is, is, is that, that the state's, that's, that's Tom, actually, or is it our? Not when it comes to spending money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's ours. Is that a sodium in there now? I think, I think, I think so. so. Right. So we run a couple LED strips yeah. and then we probably. Uh, yeah, and we can fund that with our fundraising as well. So that'll be future stuff. I just want to get it going for now. <laughs> I agree. I just have a couple of comments. Yes. First of all, I think it's a great idea. Um, I don't think that it's, I think him having a mechanism of deciding what is approval, approved or not approved is better than us being as a public entity saying what is right and wrong. I think you guys need to have that <coughs> yourself, whatever mechanism that you put in place and keep us out of it, so to speak. 
and let let the law work. Okay. That's just my, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to come. Well, it, it's it's not, in my opinion, as being public officials, it's it's not my determination what is offensive and what is not offensive. That's up to the public and the artist. That's a valid point. And that, that would be my one piece of recommendation uh, going going forward is when it comes to what is and isn't allowed up on the wall, kind of read the pulse of the community because the one thing that would ultimately shut this down more than anything else is complaints coming in to, I mean, not just us, but our successors in these positions. If, if, if they start getting a lot of complaints, that, that might spell the end of the project. So kind of anticipate what those things might be and try not to cause that. Yeah. And I do like the NHL, the NHS legacy thing. That's it's, 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 it's going to move. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's going to move. So yeah, perfect. I think that uh, we know what direction. Staff we're knows going. what direction to go. <laughs> All right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Um, probably nothing official till the next council meeting. Next council meeting. All righty. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you, guys, again. Thank you for all your work you put in. Yeah, absolutely. Next up is deer culling. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the intro, I guess, sure. and then it's all yours, Jeff. Um, I did include Montague's uh, Code of Ordinances, and on your desk, I'll call it that, Brenda's got a fancier name for it, um, is basically areas within the city uh, where if we adopted the minimum six acres, allowing two adjacent acres to combine for the six, are the areas that uh, deer culling would be eligible. I'm not saying approved, just eligible. The yellow is private areas and the blue are public areas. Again, those are eligible. That doesn't mean every area that's colored is gonna be allowed. Um, obviously, the city council would have a lot of say in the schools over you know, their properties as well as you know the biggest chunk down at the south end is obviously how met but it, by the strict definition of minimum six acres allowing you know two parcels to combine this is what you get this these are areas where you could have deer hunting in the city it's pretty substantial yeah it was kind of it was a lot of I, I just, when I, I was waiting for it and i looked at it and i'm like oh geez somebody worked Yes. Worked hard on that one. <laughs> I, I ran out of blue highlighter. <laughs> my, my only thing that I want to throw out before Go ahead. He, he runs with it is uh, maybe looking at smaller than a six acre spot to make it, you know, available to more area so we can actually call more deer. I, I think. And Probably and the, the largest is a requirement that, that that is the smallest we can go. Uh, you, you can you can go down to an acre. Um, you're going to have pretty much the entire map colored. Yeah, I, I think, and I'll I'll leave it up to the deer hunters uh, mm -hmm. and the crew, and I'm not one. I would think that the six acres probably had some logic as far as a, a safety area. That you got to be 150, 150, 150 yeah. feet from a residence. I mean, yeah. So, so yeah, you can make it smaller or larger. Um, but I think the smaller you make it, the greater the safety risk. Yeah. Uh, looking at this, I, right now in the amount that's available, um, if we just, it, it, I wouldn't mind seeing it go to four, but I'm looking at this, six right now gets us a pretty good chunk of property. I guess we could always review it, to, you know, bring it up for review next year and see how it goes. Um, this is a very, I, this is a very well written ordinance. From I went through it at least two, three times just mm -hmm. to make sure I got everything. Um, there's only a couple little changes that I probably would do, and it just for sake of saving the police department some stuff and us some stuff. Um, I don't see why we would have to um, issue a permit for every two weeks. I think we could do it for the bow season, which would which gives you established parameters already. Um, the hunt, as a hunter, I know I can hunt from November 15th to November 30th with my rifle. I know this. Um, so I don't really, 
to change it to make another set of rules is I think again we apply KISS principle with this. It makes it easier for the guys and gals out there hunting. Um, and we don't have to worry about it every two weeks. Um, that's under number B1. Under B5, um, <clears throat> Michigan has changed their rules uh, two years ago, three years ago, that you can buy, they, they, they provide X amount of, 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 of uh, additional doe permits. You can buy right over the counter. Um, I don't see a reason why if there are X amount of doe permits available and a guy decides to get three or four, um, that that's an issue um, versus um, saying, hey, you can only get one and then the second one's got to be a buck. Again, I think following the rules of, following the, the DNR already established rules that um, I do like the idea of the first one has to be a doe, which is not DNR rules, but the second one can be a buck. Um, that is not a big deal or an additional doe. Um, other than that, I didn't see anything in here really that screamed and yelled that needs to be changed. The other thing is the, there, there's a specifically written, the Montague one is specifically written that you can combine, two people oh, yes, can combine. Yes, yes, that was the other one. Yep, yeah. you're right. Um, if we change that to multiple, multiple, you know, three people living next door to each other yeah. and they come up with the right amount. I don't know how much that would increase or decrease. Yeah, I mean, if, if you had and again, that would, an uh, entire block yeah, yeah. And that, would, that, that all yeah. were tired of the deer eating their flowers yeah. um, and they all agreed if that fell in the, Within the 150 the, feet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're still looking at the houses and yep. everything you have else, to limit, but, yeah. and the roads. Yep. So far from the road, so far from the house. Yep. But, I mean, if you had somebody in town that had an acre and a half, and or two people that had an acre and a half, and somebody else that had three or four acres, and they all joined each other, I don't know why three people couldn't all combine their property together if they all agreed. The 150 feet seems like a very reasonable safety precaution for the, the line of sight for flight of a of an okay. arrow, yes. and uh, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if you got a ravine like Bush Creek where you, you're shooting very much down into mm -hmm. the ravine, if maybe that needs the same 150 foot limit. If you look at those houses, if you look at those houses down there, though, they're you're you're pretty close to 150 feet away from the house, even because my uncle used to live off of Alice, and mm -hmm. going back to his back to his property and going to the neighbor's property across the way, that there's a pretty good. If you go down the gully, at the end of how was it? There's where's the gully cross over here? One crosses down oh. off of Livingston, and then there's another one that cross off of. Oh. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a substantial amount of property from the house on this side to the house on this side. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Montague one does say you have to be, you have to hunt from an elevated. Yes, I would. I would keep that as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're not going to be ground hunting. You're not going to be ground blind hunting. You're, you're always going to be a rifle shooting or a down to yep. minimize. I mean, it's you're always going to have a possibility of a ricochet no matter what. But you're always hunting down, so that that takes a lot of the air out of it. Yep. And with a bow and a crossbow, they can go. So the section. The section 14201 in here with regards to feeding, do we have anything that closely mirrors that currently in, in our city ordinance? We do not. We depend on the state uh, regulation, which but, is actually a DNR commissioner rule. So that's somewhat redundant with what the state already prohibits. Yes. And you've got the ability to impose it's, that. It's, Gives us, uh, I'll say, a different vehicle by which to enforce it. That right there, if we could get 100% compliance, would be a step <laughs> in the right direction. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds to me like they uh, obtain a permit from the city, and there's a fee. Do you know what they charge for their? I do not. I'm not. I would imagine it's, I don't think it's in here. I didn't see it. I didn't see it in mm -hmm. I don't think it has to be expensive. I mean, they're already buying their deer license and they're, they're providing, essentially, in a roundabout way, they're providing the city a service because they're taking care of the deer herd that's already out of, out of hand. Are we incurring a cost that we need to reimburse for? 
the only thing I could think processing, is processing, and them guys going out there and looking and making sure it's appropriate. Yeah. I mean, I would keep it to a minimum. Um, I think business registration is thirty five. Mm-hmm. So probably about break even amount. About the same amount of paperwork yeah. involved. Yeah, I think that would be valid. I mean, like I said, I've already had multiple people, especially the guys that work there, that have family that live in the city of Warsaw. Like, oh, jeez, you know, they, they all know. Them. So they're, they're looking, and I think this would definitely, hopefully, fix them. Some of the issues we got going on with gear destruction in the in the in the city. There's a lot of the, uh, a good portion of the public considered public property as school property. Uh, Jewel. <coughs> as long as you're not near a, a actual school building, they would have to do you st- still need permission from the school to hunt on that property? Yeah. yeah, you have to register the property in which you intend to hunt on. So the schools would have to come in and say, we're going to allow people to hunt. Okay. I'm sure there could be some sort of provision where it's like not while school's in session, if that's the rule that the school board wants to put on yeah. or something like that. Well, that a member of the school board is back. <laughs> he just turned around. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not acting today. No, no. He's not. <laughs> if I had to venture a guess, they're probably going to pass. They're probably, yeah, from my ability standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. My ability standpoint, I'm sure they're probably going to pass. Now, the County Resource Recovery Center does allow it, but that's a few thousand acres, and there's, you know, two buildings, I think, on that whole site. And we could limit, I mean, if we if we got somebody that wants to hunt, like out at the DPW garage on the backside out there, I mean, we can limit, you know, the first couple that come in or the first guy that comes in and wants it, and if they're going to continue to harvest, okay, you got first shot, and then... You know, we establish a list. I mean, if we want to go that route, but um, I'm sure we might have people on that actually work at the DPW that might want to do that. But I don't know. But see, sure. if you get, if you allow a certain number of people on there, and then you give them the whole season, well, then that kind of cuts everybody else out. It, it does, That's, and, I don't and know I, you could you could give them either. you could give a, a, make it a lottery. I mean, just like what the county does out in Kim doesn't the county do that out the wastewater still? Yeah. Um, they allow people to hunt out the wastewater. They have a lottery. You want to do it, you have to have your your, your request in by this amount of day. They put it in there and pull the lottery tickets and, you know. Soil Conservation yeah. District does it by first come, first yep. serve. Yep, And they, you know, limit it to number of people. Yep, yep. Like there's a 20-acre piece just the other side of Wiley Drive. I know, I've been trying to get on it for years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get take it there as long as someone takes it. there. Day they I know, I know. It up or I don't have chance. But, yeah. but I think I think again I think this is something that's that's easy to put in place and, and really easy to limit and change it and massage and make it just like the art wall like we want. Um, if we don't like the, the first draft and it's not working, we can make it work. I mean, but the deer population I saw a mama and a baby floating out the other day out on Alice Street. So I mean they've already dropped and yeah. so yeah, it's, it's, gonna, it's only gonna double it's only gonna double right roughly every year. Yeah. So Well I think the time's come for this. Absolutely. I would I would I would be very happy if the school board would, would get on board and be very happy if how much yeah. the nice big parcel down here would uh, would be open to the idea. But Whoever does or doesn't participate as far as property owners, I think it's worth going for. And who knows how that, you know, they used to have the, the shooting range out there, and it was for their employees. And then who knows how that may say that to their employees. Hey, this is a perk of working here. Hey, we'll give, we'll give, let you guys go out here and do this. Police department approves it. The city approves it. Where do you go? So. Could staff possibly, like, give us a list of city-owned property that they feel would be okay? I could probably give you that answer right now. None. <laughs> None. Um, just because I, I think there's a lot of concern with, um, I mean, our property is open to the public. And if you start mixing bow hunters uh, with the family that's going out there for a walk, um, I, I think you're probably running into a lot of issues. Um, even out at DPW, if somebody's out there hunting and the crews come in at 2 in the morning, I don't know what probably can't hunt at night, right? No. Daybreak to dawn. Daybreak to 
sunset. Yes. Um, and I don't know if Will wants to chime in one way or another, but I, I would have a lot of concerns because we're allowing the general public to be on most city property at any time they want um, for lawful purposes. Um, and then you mix in hunters, which could be right for some issues. I did speak with the mayor of Montague a little over an hour ago and asked him how he felt this was working and he was convinced that it was working well. Um, his only advice was to, uh, he thought it would be best if we kept it to ourselves and didn't make a big broadcast of it because the more you broadcast it out there, the more outside people are going to come and we can look at it. Can we limit it? We got to be a resident of the city. We, we can't do that. Yeah. Where is that? We, we were just discussing yeah. that, and unless we're missing it, we, we see where the property has to be registered, and then certain requirements and restrictions on the hunter, and unless I'm missing it. To me, it seems like, you know, let's say I have six acres and I get my property registered, I, I still want to control who actually goes out there and hunts, instead of just anybody. And so you can say, Montague so I don't know, that. pardon me? Montague does have that where the property owner has to approve Okay. Who the hunter is. is that in the statute? Is that in the ordinance? Yeah. I, 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 I didn't I, see it, but I think that would address... I think that was part of the application process. Okay. The, 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 the owner first has to come forward and said, I, I put this property up for, for potential use for mm -hmm. hunting, and then the people that want to hunt it have to essentially apply to hunt on that piece of property, and the, the owner can say yay or nay. That's certainly the way I would like to see it. That you, could say, forward. you could say uh, them and their immediate family or something like that. I mean, you could go that route. I mean, you, well, if, but, if under the, you know, Section B, the licensed hunting, uh, it says hunters can hunt subject to the following. One could be written permission from the property owner. Right, yeah. Of the yeah. DMA. Yep. DMA? Deer management. Yeah. 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 DMU is what they used to call them. They, they have a lot of signage on those uh, properties that are run by the Soil Conservation District. There's another chunk out here at the other side of Durham. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Yeah. There's a couple 40-acre pieces in yep. there that they draw names out of a hat. Out of our, actually, you get, you get first, first come, first serve. Does Montague allow <coughs> on their city property? Do you know? Did they, did they tell either one of you, Scott, whether they allow it? I don't know. I, because again, hunting since I was 13 years old, um, come bow season, bow season starts October 1st and runs, we got people walking through state property, Duck Lake State Park is allowed, I mean, you know, the, the hunters are for the most part very, very good and very uh, at what they do and take pride in what they do for the most part. And of course you still have, just like everything else in the world, you still got a few but knowing your arrow flight and everything else is as far as so long as they're off the trail and everything else, it, I don't, again, the city could approve it for X amount of people for the area if we, if we decided to go that road. I guess we can always look at that down the road, um, whether we want to allow it, but there are some pretty nice substantial pieces of property owned by the city that would, where the deer happen to be, quite honestly, um, you don't travel everywhere, but um, there's some pretty good sections, um, like off of uh, Peterson Road out there that we own. Um, that's a huge chunk of blue um, out there by the cemetery. Um, yeah, like I said, we can we can make that decision. I've been to numerous so. council meetings in Montague. <clears throat> where the council actually approves every single permit. Know who the who the who the person applying is and where they are going to be hunting. So the council approves every one of those permits. And like I said, the permit you can put whatever you want on it: your name, your address, location, cell phone number. I mean, we can have, make the application as as complicated or as not complicated as you want, just so we can keep track of them. And I think they got it in there that no, 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 the city manager or the chief of police has, has to have every yes. one of them. Too. Yes. And then, the land owner too, right? And yeah, then I think right. that well, if, if between the landowner, the chief of police, and the city manager, I, 
I think you pretty much got covered. Check is right. You know, they do a background check on in, in individuals that are applying for a license. I've got one question, curiosity on my own part, and I don't know if Chief, if you can answer it or not, but <clears throat> I'm not a hunter, but I do know a lot of times when you shoot a deer, it's not going to lay down and die right now. No, they run. They're going to run. Especially with a bow, bow with a bow. So up. if you were hunting <clears throat> on, a, on, a, on an approved piece of property, and the deer takes off after you hit it and goes on to somebody else's property who is not approved and lays down and dies. Are you allowed to go on there and no. it's gonna happen? It, it, it's gonna happen. You have essentially you have to get permission from the property owner to yeah. go and recover it. It's no different than hunting state property if I hunt up in Merritt or Manistee where I hunt, if I shoot a deer and it runs over on a, on a private property, I can't go and get it. I need right. to go and get approval from the landowner to go get it. And, I mean, quite honestly, who wants to have a, a deceased deer on their property? Mm -hmm. hey, hey, you know what? I got a, a deer on your property. It ran over from here. Can I go get it? And nine times out of ten, these people are going to say, yeah. Yeah. I don't just, see just, just don't gut it on my property. <laughs> Move it back yeah, to where you were. <laughs> All right, I, I think we have enough consensus on this for staff to move forward on this. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open up for uh, public comment. If there's anyone in that wants to make any statements, questions? Yes, sir. I've got a question for staff. Um, the old Bishop property, mm -hmm. I'm looking at GIS. It says that the buildings and vehicles and all that stuff falls on our property, is that correct? Or where does that line go? We, we pretty much gerrymandered the property lines to avoid all of their buildings. Okay, so GIS is not right. Okay. No, I, and, and if you do look at it, it's, a, it's an amazing tool, but a lot of times when they do the overlay of the property lines under mm -hmm. the aerials, it's off. And yeah, so, and that's why I just wanted yeah. to make sure that we didn't have a bunch of no, we, we specifically the buildings that we know uh, we inherited a couple of pumps and that was enough. Um, oh, one trailer, but that's not yeah. Did we, yes. Did we get the trailer? Out? It is gone. I think is I think it's gone from Twin Cities as well, isn't it? Oh, they tried to sell it, which I thought was humorous, but might as well. <laughs> yeah, Twin Cities did that for free. Yeah, so it's just it, I think they're trying to recover some. Carry did, for... did us a solid since we've been out there, I don't know, 15 times in the last two years. All right. If there's nothing more, we're adjourned. I'll back in a few minutes.
It's amazing watching that. Oh, yeah. yeah I know. And then turn around and back it up and up in the edge in there. Uh, I always I find to go to work in the we only mow that once in a while. So I find the after effects of I don't know if the turtles actually hatch or if something dug them up because the shells are all laying up on top. I have about, about to say it's usually it's not very deep. I mean, they get eaten. Barely yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I see I've it's seen the house in the backyard out. after they lay the eggs. Yeah. 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 I've done a couple of I've never seen a little Turtles hatching seven back in the bottom. Yep. Right. Ready? Ready? Yep. Clock, I call this meeting to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first up is the approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the amended agenda which we received from the um, for June 13, 2023. Second. Moved and seconds. Any discussion on this? <coughs> All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed say no. <coughs> Next is special presentation, library update. That would be us. <laughs> Someone's supposed to come up here. That's a good okay. spot for you, yes. Sir. Uh, my name is Ray Weir. This is Norm Kittleson. We are your representatives to the Whitehall Community Library. We're doing fine. <laughs> That's what I hear. Um, we had a clean audit this past year, just like we've had in the last several years. Uh, total revenues have exceeded expenses, so we're in the black. Uh, capital projects fund covered our boiler replacement last year and a new roof after 20 some years. Uh, security cameras, new carpet, and meeting room furniture are planned for this year, along with whatever else surprises us out there in the world. Um, Basically, that's it. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> There's some wonderful numbers there in that sheet that he's handing out to you guys. Yeah, yeah it's just a little uh, highlight sheet and a little, little brag literature. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, how was your usage over uh, the COVID period? Did you guys see an increase in usage? Oh, this last uh, year, we're way up from I'm, previous years, oh, about uh, 30%. Say, I think. It was a beautiful place and it's a real asset. And of course, during COVID, you know, everything went down yeah, a little yeah, bit. Not too yeah, bad. You know, it's pretty good we did a lot more with the uh, electronic stuff. Do you guys have a way to track how the solar picking tables are being used or how much they're being used? <clears throat> not, not as good as I was hoping. We can't narrow down off of Catchmark Wi-Fi. The one that's got a um, um, hotspot in it, out of Whitehall Township, we can track because it's just that hotspot and we can track the usage. Mm -hmm. We can't off of just the general Catchmark. We don't know. Who's plugging in? But have you seen the pictures of the guys doing their concerts out there with their electric guitars plugged yeah. in and their amps? Yeah, I saw that. I just, I, I was just curious as to you know how much it was. I, I figured it would go over fine. I just wondered how much it was, how well it was doing. And I think it'll be even more popular after the kids from the tech center get done building the removable fourth seat for that one downtown. It'll just be a lot of the way for wheelchair users to go back up. Oh, cool. And of course, the library book bike is being used quite a bit and looking forward to more events in town to uh, show up at and hand out things for the library kids. Any other questions? Just a, a statement that I think the 
we're very fortunate to have such a wonderful institution in our community and, and I think it's very well managed and I'm just delighted that the numbers are up and there's people out there that think libraries are are old fashioned and people aren't using them, but this year is proof <laughs> they are. That, oh, yeah. that people are using them and they do value them. So uh, thank you for all you've done to make these numbers. You're quite welcome, thank you. All right, any comments from anyone else on this subject? Should we speak out now? <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up is the consent agenda. I'll move for the approval of the consent agenda. Second. Yes. Second. Is there any discussion? I've got one question, Scott, on the uh, correspondence. The minutes from the Planning Commission. Uh, new business, 201 West Colby, site plan extension. Can you tell me how to get it? behind? Are we not going to see any progress this year? Or? Well, what, what that is, is our ordinances uh, make site plans valid for one year. And since they had they actually got their original site plan approval last spring, and since that was expiring, they just came in for a renewal. So at this point, uh, I talked to one of the uh, investors, and they still are hopeful to break ground early July. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is going to have a meeting the 24th of June. Nope, that's our pre-meeting. Um, we're meeting the 24th because they're going to go to the MEDC at the end of the month for um, some tax incentives from the state of Michigan. So they think that's the last piece. They have submitted a redesigned interior that adds residential units in place of the restaurant. I think at this point they're moving forward after trying with numerous potential restaurateurs and not landing one, that they're looking at some additional um, residential units. Oh. Yeah. So it'll be all residential and one commercial. I mean, not that I'm against residential, not, I'm not against the residential, but I was really hoping that we have a nice restaurant down there. Yep. Okay, thank you. That Any, was all I had. Anyone else? All those in favor of the consent agenda say yes. 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 Opposed? No. The consent agenda is approved. The next is messages from the mayor, city council, and city manager. Um, Scott, anything? Um, the one thing that I do have is, uh, and I'm forgetting all the acronyms, so don't quote me on, on the details, but um, there is uh, a round of uh, state grants that are available for placemaking. Um, I don't think that's the latest term. And Councilmember Holmstrom, you'd sent me some information. Yes. We actually joined in with the West Michigan Collaborative, uh, which is about five counties. We submitted the West Colby as one of the projects. The West Michigan group accepted that. So now I've got a week to get a whole ton of paperwork back to them. Sorry. So that... Um, it's fun work, uh, so that we would be included. I'm not sure what all projects are included, just that ours is included. And in theory, uh, they pre-designated the state of Michigan a certain allotment for each of the regions. So the right place out of Grand Rapids and the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce are spearheading it, but it also includes uh, Lakeshore Advantage, which I think is the Ottawa County Chamber, as well as the Muskegon Economic Development. Greater Muskegon. I know. Yes, yeah. GMA. Greater Muskegon Economic Development. I can't even get the ones right that I know. Uh, so that so that was pretty good news, is that we are included. And I think I did mention that the state of Michigan has rescinded $88,000 towards Warner Street. We, uh, our understanding is that that was part of the federal increase in the debt limit between the Republicans and Democrats. I think the Republicans finally said, all right, we'll go along with increasing the debt limit, but any uh, non-earmarked funds, which is what they called, has to come back. Uh, that 88 grand was earmarked for us, but we had an 
obligated it as yet because the project's, you know, another year out. So I guess we got a little time to save a few extra bucks to recover that compromised money that was rescinded. So possibly good news and a little bad news. How many feet does $88,000 translate into? Not much at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still, still a poke in the eye. Um, I would ask, you gave us this technical memorandum. Yes. Is there any way you could distill that down to a short statement of what's going on with this? It, it, my, my interpretation is that the testing has been done, but there's no results yet. Well, they, um, that's for Tannery Bay, right. for the people in the audience. Yes. And that's uh, the quarterly report. They used to have to do monthly. Uh, they just, Tannery, or um, Whitehall Leather, Genesco, has to provide quarterly reports, which is managed by Horizon Environmental. They just talk about any activity that's taken place down there, as well as any of the test results. And those reports are always published before the test, re often, before the test results are in, so there's always kind of a, a lag. There's been no... Um, issues with any of the test results over the last year. Heather Hopkins is still the project manager on that. Uh, she's getting ready to retire, but you know that project's only been going on for 25 years now, so can't blame her for that. And they do not have, the state's still working on revising their website so that the general public can go in and access those documents. Uh, but they're not there yet. Heather today, or email yesterday, said maybe by the end of the year, anybody, anywhere can type in Whitehall Leather and get that report as well as access to the test results. But basically that three page document says it's still a clean bill of health. Okay. Uh, in, the, in section four, we're, we're talking about the tracking of the disposal of the tannery bay materials removed where it looks like 669.28 tons to date have been removed from just the North shoreline? Correct. Okay. And have, have they, you know, have they hauled any away? I know they have piles there, but have they? I'm not sure if they've hauled any okay. away yet. So um, there was a level of dewatering, plus I think the report refers to testing before it can be hauled. It can probably be hauled just about anywhere because you've got different levels of landfills. And Coopersville, I think, is a class three, which can handle just about anything. And that's likely location of its relocation. Do we know if they have any intention of any more removal? Or have they re removed everything, that, at least from the shoreline, that they found? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that Genesco was obligated to haul out a thousand tons, if that's the right number. I don't have the report in front of me. Uh, but Eastbrook Homes is told them you're going to haul whatever we dig out, even if it's over a thousand. I think Genesco kind of said, all right, we'll, we'll take care of it. That was an estimate from 20 years ago. It doesn't appear as though the piles are getting any bigger. No. It looks like they, they okay. Okay, that's all I have on that. Yes. Let's go to council. Jeff. Uh, nothing done, sir. I got two things. Um, one is I don't know if our if we made our contract with uh, whoever it was, Muskegon Township for ordinance enforcement. I don't know if that's in effect yet or not, or who to complain to. But uh, we need to look at enforcing our grass ordinance badly. There are lawns all over town that have not even been mowed once this year. What's your phone number? <laughs> um, we'll, we'll have the police uh, take a look through the city yet this week. The contract, we've signed it, we've sent it back to Muskegon Charter Township. They have to take it to their board for approval, and we haven't gotten it back as yet. As soon as they send it back, then they'll start doing the enforcement. And the other thing I have is if we're going to plan on doing uh, more events at the 
North Mirrors Promenade. Is there any way that the city could come up with some money to invest in a larger tent so there's a place for people to get out of the sun? I was down for the, was it Feet and Mr. Feet? Yeah. And uh, there were a few canopy tents up here and there that, uh, you know, unless you move the chairs underneath them, they, the shade was very, very limited and it was, it just happened to be a really nice hot sunny day down there then and there, there isn't a whole lot of place to get out of the weather. <laughs> no, and I guess my hesitation is the bigger the tent you go, the more anchorage you need. Yep. And that's always been a problem. They, you know, drive those big tent stakes in. We require them to fill them back up, but you know they never get filled quite right. Then yeah. you get the I water just, in there, the freezing. Yeah, I just and wonder the, if we bought a bigger tent. And yeah, actually, none the of that. The tent was the same size all the time. Yeah. And if DPW was putting it up and taking it down all the time, then you need to figure out how to do some retractable anchors or something like that. Uh, so far, we've not done any of the tents. That's always been up to the event organizer. Oh, okay. And I know those tents are expensive when yeah, you run them out. Definitely not cheap. Or yeah. for a wedding reception. Yeah. Just, you know. We can look something, at something. I, yep. Just, the building did start providing a little bit of shade. <laughs> but not a lot. That's all I have. So, nothing for now. Uh, just one thing, going through town, uh, I happen to notice that uh, our flags on the post are in, looking in pretty bad shape. And I guess I'm wondering, uh, being downtown, can we approach TIFA as far as possibly generating some money to replace those? Um, yeah, that's kind of an annual thing. I think DPW will start to replace them today. Um, they, they were a little bit tied up with the new clock downtown. Um, I'll, I'll stop there because the mayor probably wants to use that. Um, but I'll, I'll double check with Brian, but I think they started replacing the flags and the banners today, but we'll double check. Yeah, the weather wasn't the greatest today. I didn't get out of the wall, so. <laughs> but yeah, they, the ones that were up there were looking kind of bad. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, a couple things. Um, this latest Michigan Municipal League magazine we got with our stuff here, <clears throat> they talk about state budget surplus and municipalities and revenue sharing, which from what I remember when I was first on the council, I don't know, about 50, 60 years ago, or <laughs> we used to get a fairly substantial amount of our, our monies from state revenue sharing, and then they cut it way back, and now it sounds like they're gonna start giving us back some of this revenue sharing, and I, I wonder if that is gonna be able to help us with this road project, or if this uh, is gotta go to certain things, or you know, I mean, I don't know if you read this article or not, but it sounds like a fairly substantial amount is gonna be going to cities, and I just, you want to counter chickens before they hatch, but yeah, and you're probably a lot more optimistic than I am, oh. um, <laughs> because what the what the state started doing is there's two. One is constitutional revenue sharing, and statutory. Which what was happening in years past is the state revenues went up, they were required to give us certain minimum amounts out of constitutional, and they artificially lowered the statutory. So probably for about 10 or 15 years, we got the same exact amount of money, even though the state coffers were building significantly. Uh, we did get a boost, um, and Alyssa, I think, is behind me, in 21 and 22, and it was retroactive with uh, the census, and since we had a population increase, we got a nice little boost, but it's not going to start paving miles of road by any means. And, and again, they always do that based on... Um, revenue forecasting, I think they do it four times a year. And there's always an adjustment at the end of the year. And, you know, so the state fiscal year is done and we've got the checks cashed. Um, then that's where my comfort level is. That's what right you get a Christmas bonus. 
<laughs> yep. And Alyssa does budget based upon those uh, revenue forecasts that are generated by the state, but right. sometimes they're wrong. You know, if we all could forecast the stock market. Right. We won't be sitting there. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're always hopeful. I think the current administration in the governor's office has been favorable and doing what they can. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, over this past week in the White Lake area, <coughs> Sport Fishing Association put on a, a fishing tournament for the kids. And boy, that was just awesome. There was a, just a ton of kids down there at Liberty Park. And, and uh, of course, I had three grandsons involved in the thing, and they were, one of them said it was the best day of his life. Of course, he won a few things. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of put a plug in for them. They were, Put out a call they kind of would like to have more members in their uh, sport fishing association and they do the fish boil later in august and they do quite a few things around to help with that resource in the area and it's only like i think he said it's ten dollars a year for a family to join the white lake sport fishing association and i just wanted to put a plug in for them from my personal Point of view, just it was just a really nice thing, and I, I'm hoping at least they really try to keep the area, get the area cleaned up, everybody clean up after themselves, and I'm hoping they did a pretty good job because I didn't stay until everybody was gone, but it looked like it was pretty clean when they all left. So, just yep. wondered what if there was any comments on that. They did. No, they they've always done a good job cleaning up after themselves. It was a great event. That's it. They, they uh, from what I spoke with them, they had over 200 kids registered oh, wow. to do that, and yeah. uh, they also do a annual highway cleanup. The Sport Fishing yeah. Association does, so they're they're a great organization to have in this community. So I'm glad they're there. And I'm thinking probably 50 percent of the kids got prizes. <coughs> with everybody got money back, and they they served uh, pizza to everybody. That was really. Keith. Nothing this evening. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I've got one in effort. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> this last weekend, I went to Ohio, just for council's information. I went to Ohio and went through several cities in Ohio, and one of them, and, and you guys know because I put out that big nine page thing, all the stuff I like. Um, I found something else. Um, Scott's <laughs> cringing over here. Um, <laughs> essentially, what they do is they have. Um, they have, like this. they have banners for past, um, and they put them up, must be for Memorial Day and leave them up for a while, of um, military members from the past um, with their picture, their service dates, or their passing date, and they put them up as flags. They're essentially old banners. I've seen those. And um, I thought it was one city, and then I just kept going through of cities in Ohio, and, and everybody's got the same banner. So I wouldn't mind seeing that down the road for us and something maybe something as far as a white lake uh thing between us and montague um see if we can get some buy-in from them and just put these people up and i don't know how the process they work how they get their veterans up there but it's it's pretty impressive it's most i mean every flag has got somebody different on it and everything else and i think it's both sides i think there's one on one side and one person on the other side so um it's it's definitely humbling to say the least so all right, and for me, I, I am very happy to announce that our brand new clock is up and working. It's, uh, if you don't know where it is, it's on the northwest corner of Mears and Colby, or in front of Fetch Brewery. It's a beautiful clock. I look forward to many years of correct time. <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> on both sides. So, yeah, it's... It's, it's great. I'm so happy. And that was basically a, a uh, TIFA funded project? It was a TIFA funded project, but I will have to put kudos out for the DPW staff that assisted in its uh, installation as well as we borrowed a SkyTrack from Winberg Construction and uh, Rick Blankenship from the district schools came over and actually ran this uh, SkyTrack for us. 
So between the city, a private entity, and the schools, and Verdon uh, Cloth Company, it was, it was a pretty good project. Went up without a hitch. Working together. How, yep. how wonderful is that? <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, next up is public comment. Yes, sir. Our own representative on the County Board of Commissioners. Kim Sear, your uh, County Commissioner for this area. I live on Staple Road. Uh, I just have uh, an announcement of the, uh, an opportunity for, uh, for the arts here uh, in this summer. Uh, it's called MARC. It's a uh, summer arts camp, uh, day camp in Muskegon for grades 5 through 12, July 31st to August 4th. Uh, the things that are available to young people are uh, drama, choir, orchestra, visual arts, songwriting, concert band, tech team training, photography, worship band, and more. Uh, registration uh, goes through June 20th. Uh, it's a special price through June 20th, and the registration closes on July the 10th. So, Where would they register for that? And I, well, I'm going to leave this for you. <laughs> okay. So that information, that website is the best place to go for that. So, Okay. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much. Can the city post it on... City website or yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Norm Kittleson, 1105 East Blue Street. I wanted to. Uh, Council Member Brown's remarks regarding the lawns reminded me of something that I've been hoping I could share with you guys. So thanks for prompting my memory there, Scott. Um, in case you're not familiar, there's a, a worldwide movement called No Mo May, M O W. And um, the idea is to allow lawns to grow through the entire month of May to help pollinators, uh, flying insects such as bees, other insects, and um, animals that um, forage through or actually uh, use the pollen from plants, uh, dandelions, and other things to uh, help them gain their nutrition, and it also spreads the pollen around. Pollinators worldwide are really under a lot of pressure right now for various reasons. So. This is a movement that's going to help encourage the establishment of their colonies early in the season. Uh, so what municipalities all over the United States and the world are doing are saying, okay, for the month of May, we're going to forego our you know, uh, ordinances regarding lawn length, but uh, to allow the, the um, grasses and different plants to grow so that they can produce flowers that the pollinators can take advantage of. So. I'm just putting it out there for you guys, something to consider. I let my lawn go as long as I could this year, and about the third week of May, I'm just like, if I don't cut it out, I'm never going to be able to get it done. I'd have to just pull in a flamethrower or something. But, you know, um, thank you for not ticketing me, by the way. I really appreciate that. So, anyway, just something to consider. So, thank you, Scott. I meticulously observed no mold. All right, thank you. <laughs> What's going on to you? You don't have a lot of lawn. If you're still living where you're used right to, Sean, you don't have a lot of lawn, so it's all good. <laughs> no rain, man. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, round lawn, hey. Yeah. And then, you know, I think there's something maybe for a future work session to talk about that. It's some sort of city sponsored event. Contest, so you can win. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 around. Okay, here we go. Is there any other public comments? <laughs> okay, then we will move on to old business. Do we have any old business? No, sir. No old business. We do have new business. Resolution 2324, budget amendment number four. <clears throat> I'll take I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2324 budget amendment number four. Second. 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 Is there any discussion? Anyone have any? No? Roll call, please. Holmstrom? Yes. Mullally? Yes. Connell? Yes. Sikinga? Yes. Heidelberg? Yes. Brown? No. Salter? Yes. Resolution 23-24 is approved. Um, last is public comment. Anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Hi. Um, I'm Tamara Horn. I'm a resident of the city of Whitehall. I wanted to share a 
piece of news just in case you missed it. In April, the City of Muskegon Commission unanimously passed a climate resolution to eliminate harmful emissions by 2040. The City of Muskegon Mayor Ken Johnson said, quote, I personally, I personally am excited to not only see how we as an organization can reduce our carbon footprint and become more cli climate mindful, but also how can we implement and modify policy to encourage development that is environmentally friendly, end quote. It's good news that the council, city manager, and department heads in Whitehall now have more neighboring cities to partner with as you make and implement your plan. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? One more thing. Yes, sir. I'm done. <laughs> uh, just to make everybody aware in the public and everything else, the forest creatures will be showing up the 22nd through the 25th next week. <laughs> Forest creatures. Oh, like forest. Like forest. Forest. Like forest. 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 Forest.